we've been mentioning again and again that this world is Rubu Ra and is Alma Sheke, the Makor of Sheke, etc. So it doesn't surprise you that the, the, with Corona, Takufa, and uh, you know, all the politics nowadays is such Sheke, like, he, you believe Putin, you believe Biden, they're all like probably lying for their agendas, you know, on some level. Uh-huh. No, it's like hard to. The truth is not definitely not going to be coming from the media companies. Clip is Joe Biden. Yeah, it's 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 going to come from right. the Torah and from the Makora of of every of the Bria, and this is where we have to put ourselves in terms of where we go to for Das Torah. We have to go towards the Torah. Um, we learned some very important things yesterday, and it was it was a perfect timing with Rosh Chodesh Adar. Aleph being today, that we get a big chizuk in truth and MS mm. and chizuk and simcha. These two things go together. And we saw this that Rava, who used to teach Torah, would make a joke, would do some batchanas to open up the mind of his Talmidim. I mean, he'd also eat wine. I mean, he'd eat wine and, and sorry, drink wine and eat. I mean, it's just Rosh Chodesh next door, so mm. getting blessings from the husband. Right. Lots of blessings, blessings. Extra blessings comes with Shkodesh. Yeah. So we have the bus, so we get the opportunity to to Chaparayim with the flesh. And, uh, you know, Shabbos, Yom Tov, you usually think of that. Rosh Chodesh back in the day was also more of a Yom Tov, and it will be again when Mashiach comes. Um, right now it's, you know, we say Musaf, there's still some sort of Cholomoyed, Hashbaz for Aliyahs. There is, there is some sort of holiday to it and hello example but not the full hello i think ultimately i think the full hello but the idea gluttony guzzle meat and quaff wine in order to satisfy their bodily that's the wrong direction yeah it's so fressing away and drinking the chayams overly yeah which we're going to have a test the shabbos like we're going to all be together so we're going to have to mr shabbos i'm eating my shlomo tonight shlomo cats i'm very excited first time going there we were invited last week and it got cancelled because we were already booked to Yishalayim. Ah. And I thought, wow, I just lost my opportunity. And then Hashem opened up the door. We have been to his house for like Purim or um, Shalasudas or um, Lel Shabbos. He did like a tish. You remember you were there with Joey Rosenfeld. Uh-huh. So I have been to his house before, but not like for a proper Shabbos meal. I brought my son when he, the one Shabbos he was home to get a blessing from Shlomo. So I'm very excited about that. But at the daytime, we're going to be together in, in Pittam Thoris. It's going to be uh, uh, our family, your family, and I think another f- the family hosting us all. And the avoda will be not to overly eat. Like, there is Onik Shabbos. We said Aliyah Salamas, is Mavara, just automatically all the food, everything is Kula Kodesh. Mm-hmm. But somehow we managed in, in our generation, I mean, to make this holy day a little bit too uh, Onik Shabbos, if you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's like overdoing it with the Kiddush Club and the the, the alcohol that doesn't the need herring. to be consumed, the herring, like the, the everything, a small amount of everything, the oh. covered Shabbos. I've even seen like the biggest Sadiqim like pile their plates on Shabbos when during the week they don't eat anything. And they, but when they, I mean pile their plates, I mean like one small plate and they put a bit of different things that you don't even have ever seen the meat. And they put it like a little bit of each thing onto their plate to be Makai Monik Shabbos. That's piling their plate. Not 10 plates of 10 servings of I don't know what. And then 10 lachaims and of the most expensive liquor. Like, we just don't need to do this. If you forget about the you have to have Rahmanas on your body. Forget about your soul. Yeah? Yeah. The, the effect it has. Like, I, I was a, a few minutes later today. And one of the reasons is because every Thursday night there's a bit more lachaims and more drinking. So that drinking. Uh, makes you less, you know, functional, less, less resistant to getting up in the morning. And or by the uh, zero shimshim. Yeah, so, I mean, like, it just, it takes off an edge that a human being has when you drink, yeah, generally. That's yeah. been my been my experience. And, uh, you know, we all need to to work on doing this Hashem Shemayim, as we're saying, we're learning here with Klippas Noga. Klippas Noga is a translucent in between intermediary level uh-huh. and it would make a big difference if we get it right the amount we drink the amount we eat right, during the week for sure you have to be even more careful but even Shabbos this is the point we're adding in even Yom Tov it should not be like you know like 
these these uh, I mean, weddings. I haven't been to such weddings. I don't even remember in ages. But like had the smorgasbord, yeah. In America, the carving stations and you know and all these holiday pacer programs and holiday hotels like. You, but you know, it's like standing there, like hungrily, like you, you, <laughs> just the whole. If you listen to Weinberg, it's sheer him enough, right? If I'm sure you've heard his opinions about it all, yeah. Moshe Weinberg, yeah. Yeah, he's not a fan of this stuff. No, or like standing in the mixed kiddishes, and you know, he's not a fan. So um, he's he's a fan of Shabbos Kodesh and Oneg Shabbos. Yeah. He's not a fan of pressing. Yeah, that's that's the point. Anyway, so that's where we got to yesterday, and I think it's very connected because the whole Indian is the Shem wants us to bring a build a tir tachtona and elevate this this intermediary level. There's sparks there. There's rays of holiness to bring it back to Hashem. That's mevara the the chias and the bus of the yom. It's mevara. Yeah, but Shabbos we don't need to mevara. We do need to say in the Shem the kavod Shabbos Kodesh. Okay, let's go right to the chain. Ha oimer milsa de bedichis de bedichusa. Bechach dasel asameach libo la shem. Yeah, we said before that Rabbi would make a joke to open up the mind and sameach the hearts to Hashem and his Torah, but would also. And that's another thing. Mishnah Nicholas Adam am besimcha. We have to do. How are we going to elevate through simcha? Yeah, through, through making jokes so that we can then. I mean, our heart should be open. To Hashem and His Torah and Avodaso and His Holy Avoda, Shuchim Lios Besimcha Kamosh Asa Rabba Tamidav Shama Lefnei and Milsa De Bedichusa Tchila Bediche De Rabbanon. So he would make a joke before any any of his shirim. When a human sirach is made with this intent, that he the words which originates in Klipas Noga, is extracted from the evil of Klipas Noga and absorbed in sanctity. So Rabba also not only did he wake up his Talmidim and give them open hearts to his Torah, so they can recover the Torah. There was a relationship, there was a hemshech of the Messiah of, of Ratz and Hashem. But there was also the Nakuda that the, he was doing a tikkun or called elevating that nitzos, that, that ray of holiness that was in the Klippers Noga. Because what's Klippers Noga? Even mundane speech. Just speaking. Speaking about your car, you got fixed, and the guy. Kind of gave you the old car and laughing and you know it's ridiculous and you've got this new car and they're giving you the old car yeah. the whole situation and it, but you make it into a joke and then it helps you learn better yeah. and then you elevate that whole scenario one also because you have a Muna that it was from Hashem even though that it's you're dissing a little bit the customer service so that's but, the beginning though when you when you make it into a joke it really yeah. helps with the Amuna. yeah it helps with the Amuna. It's and the it only also, other way it makes sense it takes off the edge because otherwise yeah. you feel like throwing things, you know, like losing it, like reacting to the to the to the the situation, and that's just going to be working for the other side. That's going to that will pull that ray of kedusha in that moment and those words into the negative because you become angry. Angry is one of the we said of Klipas Tameis, yeah. Angry. Whereas when you have Simcha and Amuna, that elevates all those kind of scenarios that we go through over here in right. that Holy Land. Now, what happens to the guy? We're going to get to the Kiddush Vesa. Zuli Basa, the Savoy Yain, the Mois Taivois, Skufo, Benasho, Bahamias, Shibachinus Yisoda Mayim, Ba'abi Yisodis, Araim, Shibor Shemena Midas Taiva. And he's fressing away this, this fancy meat and the beautiful wine, yeah, in yeah. order to what? To satisfy his animal's needs. Yeah, like when I even when I go to Zer I take make I pour myself one cup of each thing I want to drink, like a bit of the the whiskey and a little bit of the just to be yotzi the arak because it's like you know Svadi kind of suda, and then I I have a bit of chillin. But I don't go like can have four helpings. I don't. There was cake on the table, brownies, very tempted, and you have to resist it. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't, do I need the brownies? Not kiddish, yeah. Depends the type of brownies we're talking about. Yeah, they probably were good. But I didn't. I just made a brain of fushes and I was yotzi my my my. Uh, exactly. Okay, so that that's controlling that. But here, this guy's pressing. He's he's gone to, I don't know. Give me the best meat restaurant in New York. I'm sure there's some, mm. and they have. Mm. There's a place Tabernacle. I don't know if that's the best one. Tabernacle. There's a place called Tabernacle. Yeah. It's uh, by the owner of the the guy who owns uh, El Al. Oh really. Same dude. 
same guy. Yeah. Oh, same. And he's, I heard he's orthodox a little bit, no? He's an orthodox Jew, yeah. yeah. But really, like, real, real, really nice real deal. Yeah, you know him? No, I met him. I, I was, uh, I met him once. Wow, what is this he has? He's really, really, like, yeah. really like a... Uh, Allowed Mama should, you know, be the key to this whole functioning. Thing, yeah. You as well, to go to work, go back and forth. Yeah, go back and forth. Thank you, Hashem. I went to go see my parents. It's good to Yeah? Yeah. My important. This is Kibbut Avaim. She was so, and he, you know, he has that schus, he kept the airports open. Yeah. You start a mime, Abi Sodis Arayim, Shabor, Shemano Midis Ataiva. So the point is that the mime, think about it, all kinds of experiences of taiva and pleasure are connected to mime. By the way, Sadiqim, don't drink water. No way. See why I never saw him drink a cup of water in my life, or a bottle of water, or any water. What does he drink? May soda. Always something in it. Coffee. I saw him in the shop. He had a coffee and a may soda. Also doesn't drink water. They don't drink water. Soda. It's an Indian in Mikubalim because it brings you to the Olamatanuk. It's it's it's, it's coming from the Olamatanuk. The Mayim Mayim is connected to the Hochma, which is and and Bukhulu, whatever the Kabbalistic reasons are, but it tunes you into being more attuned to Tanug and Tzadikim are always about precious with the Tanugim so they, they don't want to be taken over so they'll have a May Soda so one Sadiq once said to me you know why we drink May Soda he said to me because it's Labor Day and Jews need to be Labor Day all the bubbles jumping around ah, interesting. Yeah. and the coffee is Kaveh Al Hashem Kaveh Al Hashem yeah whereas the Mayim and it's Tikkunim the coffee have you heard the Torahs of coffee you put the 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 ches the hot water is the chesed. You put the the gavura, which is like the coffee, yeah, and then you bring in the the milch, which is also a chesed. The chagid and you put a little bit of sugar and sweeten it, and that's a hamtakas of dinim. That's such a people have made coffee and like mum like the bitterness. Purim yeah, it's purim to. But the point is that the nakuda is that they're not uh, they're not fressing, and so mayim is connected to this. The sod of Tanuk. T- uh, here he says Taiva. He says Lashen. He's talking about the Nefesh Bahamis. Pulls you down into Tanugim. So the Siddiquim are very careful with the element of water. How, to, how much to be involved. Because all the thing about relations, everything to do with pleasure is connected to the aspect of moisture and, right. and, and water. Yeah, the ability to procreate comes from water. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So it has to be carefully dealt with. They're, they're very able, these Siddiquim. They know what. It's going to bring them, draw them towards these kind of things. So mm. they're very careful with their involvement. In such case, the vitality of meat and wine that is ingested, here we go, we're getting the chizuk from Shabbos now. The vitality of the meat and the wine that ingested is ever degraded, absorbed temporarily the utter evil of the three unclean keepers. So literally, just going to tabernacle and fressing like a the Vild Chaya, as your Zayda would say, eating like an animal and just like no Torah, no nothing, watching a basketball game on your phone and just talking nonsense, that will pull you into the Gimel Klippers of Timaeus, yeah? Yeah. The Gufa of Nafs in the hand, Levush, Levush, He's got, and not just you, the, the Chiyas in that food, that's the point, the Chiyas, the, you were there to perform a Tikkun, and you, you forgot even to say an after broccoli, you just left. Right. You went out of your friends partying somewhere. I like how they have temporarily here. Ah, oh, oh, oh. you, you got the nakura. The goof and nice in the hand of Vushimarkavi becomes a garment, a vehicle for these clippers. This is right. exactly the point of this parak we're going to get to because there's, there's, there's tuba. We're going to see. We can, we can elevate it. The fisha, woo, temporary. So you actually picked up on the whole point where it's going now. So the person repents, yeah, he does tshuva, and he returns to the service of Hashem and his Torah. So now you suddenly say, wake up, you say, wait a minute, I just remember learning Tanya. And it was all about bringing this, these, this flesh and this wine back to Hashem. So I feel bad, I lost myself for a minute. I, right. I, was, I was emotional, eating, whatever the reason was. I now need to go serve Hashem. So you go afterwards, you go to the local shtibu, you, you dub in a fiery marav, you, you right. knock out a daf gemara, or the, you go to Rav Stefanski's Ashir in Miami or wherever right. it is. You, you, you go and you do your avoda, right. and suddenly you elevate through the learning and the davening, all that food and energy now comes back towards sanctity. The ki lefisha, ain't a basa, haisa v'yayin kosher, 
But that was all tally on what? That the bus and yarn were kosher and permissible. Yeah, that, that, the tabernacle has a good heksha, I hope. Yeah? Mm, I think so, yeah. Good yeah. Someone to meshkiach yeah. tamidi comes in there, checks in the kitchen, there's no funny business going on. Yeah. yeah? And all the meat and is done according to the dasadin, the fee, the, you know, kashris and, and shrita and all the different things right. that need to be taken care of. There's no chashash of bas of achalev and any other kind of kashris that's very involved. Yeah? So they're always yeah, taken care of. And the higher heksha you use, usually the higher percentage of shmira you get. Now it says by Siddiquim, I heard this when I learned this a long time ago from Moshe Wilson. He said that on this part of the Tanya, that it's very important to realize that um, Siddiquim have sat at the Shemayim. It's brought in Shulchanor. It's actually a halach in Shulchanor. That because of their Yerush Shemayim, they get heavenly protection. So that means they won't end up eating tray food. Why? Because they have Yerushalayim. Wow. Just by having Yerushalayim, Hashem will make a nace. The guy next to you will get the tray. Or the, it, so it will work out. You won't get that food that's right. not kosher. Because you, you're focused on serving Hashem. Hashem will protect you from having a nixal, even when you think it's kosher. And it, you check the mashgir. You've done all the shadlas. Sometimes still it doesn't work out. You need Santa de Shemayim. That's the point. The mashgir is bringing. You need Santa Shmai to eat kosher. It's not, you can't just be Samach and Neheksha. You have to dab into Hashem, like with everything. The Hashem should protect me, that, you know, this food should come to me from the right place. The Shrita was done correctly. All the different requirements well, were you, done. If you went into a restaurant that has a Heksha, it's right? not guaranteed. It's not Sentages. guaranteed. Sentages. Sentages. Right, it's not guaranteed. However, yeah. and I think this is like where the, this is my personal opinion. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. If you walk into it that has a that has a good hechsher, and the percentage is, it's going to be kosher. But there is a small percentage that might be a mess up. Maybe there was an Arab there who worked there. Yeah, it could go so far back as even the animal. The uh, animal could have been right. Yeah, back in the day, and the guy who checked it didn't check it properly. Well, just had a thousand not, of them before, and that one slipped through. You right. know. So you're not eating not kosher. You're just. It's a different Indian. I don't think that that that, that person is. I, mean, yeah, I, 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 this is my th- own thing. I don't know if it's, I don't want to per- maybe tzaddikim are on different levels though. But you know, yeah, for an average Joe like me. I mean, you did your stadlus, so then it, you did your that's you your, your stadlus. Otherwise, you're gonna walk around like a crazy person. I feel like some people are mamish crazy when it comes to these things. Like, yeah, I agree. And then they're just like you know. I agree. I'm I'm pretty relaxed about this kind of stuff no, because like, of uh, being I feel simcha's a vote. simcha in, in life is more important. But you see, in order to be able to elevate the food, it has to at least be kosher. Right. That much Hashem asks you to 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 make your shdalas an effort to one to make sure that you're paying and and investing in kosher food. Right. And then then you have an opportunity to elevate it through your davening right. and your learning and your ma'aser chesed. He doesn't bring that up, but it's also ma'aser chesed would also be doing mitzvahs. Right. Would also be a way of elevating the food. Great story with Rabbi Weinberger. Yeah. So we, I went with him a few years ago to, they went to Europe. So we went to Rome. Yeah. So we went to one of the kosher meat restaurants there. And so they ordered food, but I, yeah. I, I wanted some of the things off the menu that they, they didn't get. Yeah. So I ordered some meat. And it comes, and then one of the guys who was like arranging the trip said, ah, you can't eat the meat. I said, yeah. why? He said, I'm not sure if it's glott. Yeah. Because they, they, they don't always, they, they don't have glott meat here. Yeah. So I went over to the owner, yeah. who was the manager of the place also, and I said... Was it a Chabadi or something? No, 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 it's like a regular... Like Cause a, my daughters were just in Rome and Florence, and... Well, Rome is a big... Not Rome, this was, sorry, this was... Uh, she was in Florence, and she got such good kosher food there. Where's all the, the yeah, where's all the... the Milan. The, so maybe it was Rome. Rome, probably Rome. Rome, yeah, it was Rome, yeah, in Rome. Yeah, they have really good kosher food there. Yeah. And so then, so he was like, eh, I well, asked the guy who's the owner, Israeli guy, with the yarmulke, Shomer Shabbos. He yeah. said, is the meat glot? Because I was told it's not glot. And he goes, no, the meat is glot. I said, okay, I went back to the guy. I said, it's glot. He's like, listen, this is just what I know. You shouldn't eat it. So I went to Royal Amberger. I said, what should I do? Should I throw it out? Should I not eat it? He's like, because the hechsters there are weird. Like, there's only one hechsher. It's Chabad. 
don't yeah. know, the Heksha whole thing there is weird. Yeah, the Heksha thing in England is different as well. So yeah. anyways, Ramam Gur was like, the place has the guy spot. tell you it's Kla? I was like, yeah, he's like, is yeah. it Shomer Shabbos? Yeah, he's like, so be normal, you could eat it. Well, like he didn't eat it, but... He didn't eat it, but he was like, you could eat it, of course you could eat it. He's like, just... Don't he, he knows where you're holding. He's, he's not, like, don't and be once afraid. he says it's okay, it's okay. Right. I was like, you said it's okay. Yeah. And then after that, I went. I had some pork. I had some yeah, kid on It was delicious. <laughs> Ramon said, I have it. He said, yeah, really? Yeah, he said, is it it's kosher? I said, the guy says this pork is kosher. Yeah. It's, uh, then we had faker the other day at Briss. You remember that? You were at the Briss? I was not. I had to go to the to to car to story. To take so care the, of Klippus. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> they had fake in here. First time I'd had it, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was very nice, actually. Oh, it was a Fleischiger. Fleischiger bris. Amazing. Oh. Early in the morning. It's a Nine o'clock in the morning. We were uh, eating it already by 9.30, 10. I was already eating a hamburger. Yeah. I didn't, like, part one thing. I didn't part my plate. I took one hamburger and a little bit of fake in. I didn't go back and then take another five more. Right. You know, like, just take a little bit, enjoy the cover, the Sudas Mitzvah, and right. zel. I was a bit labored in the it's podcast. Beginning to do a flesh, flesh yeah, it was really nice. The, right. the, I did a podcast afterwards, and the guy, uh, Yosef Aaron, was like, well, you, you drank too much coffee today? I was like, no, no, no. I had like four or five lachaims already. Uh, I'm like, labor, I'm ready to go, man. And I was like, in a good mood. And the hamburgers, yeah. But the point is, yeah, we, this, this whole thing of how we interact with Gashmis, you definitely need to keep normal. Normal is a good thing. You need to keep Yerushalayim as well, dumb for it. And you also need to think when you're eating and drinking, this is a ticken of nitzot. This is part of what we're here for to elevate this world. This is part of why we are here. It's not just the work. No, we're not, it's not like a, 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 a non-Jewish lifestyle where you wake up in the morning and go you know, to your work and then you eat and drink and go back to sleep. You know, like, that we're not just like right. that kind of existence. We have to think in the morning. We're davening, we're learning, we're, we're using our energy for Vodas Hashem and then we go work with a mind to be able to, to use that panasa for Avodah Hashem. And so too, when we come and we go out, mm. take our wife out to a nice restaurant for Shalom Bias. Like we did the other day, the podcast we did, someone sponsored us, and they said we could use the money to like, take our wives out or something, so we did that. And we went to Rosa, it was a very nice meat restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really so into it, meat, the whole meat thing. I'm more of an English dude. We don't really so, so such meat eaters, but nevertheless, I ate some of it, and it was, it was nice. We had a nice drink, and... And it, the main focus was, how can we have a happy moment with our wives? You know? yeah. That was the mindset. And that, that's, Shalom Bias is a massive thing for this generation. If you can have Shalom Bias, then you've you got a lot of brocha in your life. Zer loshin heter v'muta. This is implied in terms of heter and muta. Klo mashe'inu kushu v'asa bidei ha'chitsonim. That which be done, they say, is not tied and bound by the power of the extraneous voice, uh, forces. Because you understand, heta means to untie, matir, right. matir asarim, we say every morning. So you're matir the asarim, you're, uh, you're, you're permitting those sparks that could be fallen into the Gimel Tchibas Tames, you're opening them up, you're releasing them to Kedusha, to Avodah Hashem. Right. So what? She'enu kashuva asabi dechitsonim, they should not be tied and bound by the powers, Isur is also to bind, that's the asarim, the bound, they should not be bound up in the chitsonim. By these external forces. You understand? You want to destroy Hamas? Right. Yeah, don't eat hummus. No, you want to destroy Hamas? It, it means becoming a Sadiq, literally. Right. That or would be the. Hummus. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're right. The Kavach Shabbos. But to turn everything into a Hashem, and that destroys the Chitzonim. These are external forces. The only reason they have any power. How, it, even if you look at the story right now, they're getting the money from UNWRA, whatever it is, and all this stuff. All these different, they, they're nurturing from chitzonim. They're, they're, they're these yeah. chitzonim, so they're nurturing from, from sources of, of money and right. like things that are giving, giving them ability to carry on fighting right. in, in, the, in the wrong way. Yeah? Whereas Am Yisrael, we're trying to mafan this from Sadaka and Chesed, and we're trying, to, we're trying to win this war through our Avodah Hashem, through Torah and Tefillah. And the problem is, once it gets caught up in these external forces, it, it's preventing it from returning and sending to Hashem. And it, this is the really important point. You met the idea of temporary was an important point. It doesn't have to stay that way. But if you don't 
elevate it with the, with the concept of heta and a vodas Hashem that it should be untied and you can elevate it through vodas Hashem it gets it's the the energy reverts sanctity through the person's return so it's got a trace the evil remains in the body yeah this is this is where the problem is there's the reshima of the food it doesn't it's not just like even if you elevate it but there's still some remnants of the negativity so we don't really like choose to live in a way where we're up and down like this like a yo-yo mm -hmm. yeah we're, we're fressing and then we're serving a sham site so you know people there are people I, I don't feel like i'm like this I'm a bit more of a consistent kind of guy but there are people like who literally are up and down like i yeah. even know some around here also i'm not going to judge them she will be the so. over. No, judge everybody. Don't judge anyone. Judge but I, I have noticed. Favorably, that's why. No, oh, favorably, good. Ah, you see, you like that. Good, good. That's a good. Uh, good. good. <laughs> like Free that, that in. See the, the, that one extra word. Yeah. So that's the good. Yeah, we judge them favorably. It's not easy, you know. They they've got a lot of pressures on them, and they need to relax a little bit. And once again, the American culture is the entertainment escape world is very strong. So you know, by by Western uh, countries. So there's a there's a big like in, uh, economy for it. There's a whole push. You need to relax. You need to have a Sunday day and self care. Yeah, self care, self indulgence. You know, take care of yourself again and again. You hear it all the time. So uh, you know you're freaking out a little bit with all the bills and this and that. And so then you need to go chill with your boys, play some poker, smoke some weed, eat some some meat, whatever. Like you know, gamble, like th this kind of stuff, like it, it's not my kind of chilling, but I understand, like there is this thing. The problem is, even if you, they manage to get up the next day and serve Hashem, there's still a Rashima from the, the negative night that he had. It, mm -hmm. doesn't just, it doesn't just disappear. That's the problem. That's what he's saying here. Because he says, increase of a body pressure causes the food to send its total evil. So you're eating it for the sake. You're getting too caught up with the poker and the whatever. So okay, the food becomes part of the body. Repentance elevates not only the person but also the energy of the food and drink as well. It's don't become a part of the body, a vestige of evil remains. So even you're doing tshuva, but there's still something there. You know, I remember Rav Volovsky once said it takes seven years cycle for the body to, re to renew itself. All the right. cells, all the skin, everything to renew itself. Seven right. year cycle. So eventually you are going to be like a new you, like you in, even on the physical level. You're going to be in, yeah, go to the mikvah. Okay, so I goof, la chiba to keva, kamon is by the kamon. For this reason, the body must go on. So then, the only way you're going to really purify it is, <laughs> I don't want to get into this, but all like the heavy stuff, like the chiba to keva, he translates it purgatory of the grave. Yeah, we have a keva, cleansing yeah. after death. Yeah, it's. As will be explained below. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Yeah, but basically, it's not being done now in this world, it's right now after 120. So all those meat boards, everyone, listen Eventually, out. there's going to have to be sorted out. Mm. And those meat boards. Those worms out, are hungrily waiting on the earth for those guys to be buried because they're going to have a fresh. Fresh out those meat boards. <laughs> those cured beef are going to be eaten by the worms. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. yeah, so you thank Hashem when you don't have... Sometimes all these people live fresh away and you're thinking, wow, it must be such fun. Uh, you know, because I don't have that ability, and then I'm, then I need to say, wait a minute, thank you, Hashem. Hashem's preventing me from being pulled down into this situation. Right. So this is a really, like, subtle, holy thing that we have to work on. Yeah. <coughs> that when we're with our wives, there's drops of semen that emit from the body because you're excited or whatever before or after and it didn't make it fully inside the rechem, inside the place which is the Mokkum Kodesh, where it should be and therefore there's yeah, he, he didn't completely sanctify himself at the time of being with his wife right? meaning like he, he had a few like movies in his head when he was doing what he was doing and he wanted to try this and try that and all this other stuff yeah, that goes on or he you know, was not thinking the Shem Shemayim or he was ashamed with Sanek her. He was thinking how he can get out of it. And it, look, it's a taiva, a big taiva. So we have to, you know, really try work on it, dumb for it. And and there's thank God there's mikvah and tikkun klali, and there are eitzes how to deal with it. Right. But it, it's it's something where the vitality, or is temporarily absorbed to the evil of the three um, these gimel kibbutz tameis. They get caught up in it until what the person does tshuva. And we said tshuva is one of the ways also is learning Torah because when your mind's absorbed in Torah it fixes up the, the mind was being absorbed in Tivers 
It's like a chiropractor. Yeah. It realigns your neshama. Yeah. So learning is also a big thing. That's another big thing. People think, oh, just say Tikkun Klali, but you also have to learn. Right. You have to do some avodah. Well, Tikkun just... Klali is sort of learning. You're saying Tehillim. It's true, learning? but do you think about all the learning you're doing when you're saying Tikkun Klali? Right. I don't know. I don't really think about the words either. Yeah, so we have to work I've on it. Never, I've never really like said Tikkun Klali. It's never been my Indian. Yeah, I try to do it once a week. Yeah? Every, every Shabbos at least. What I would really like to do is sit and learn it. So you know what I'm saying. So we can do that. That could be another project, I think. Because I think that it's important, and the, the ten to them are very powerful. You start to think about the words there. Some of them we say more often than we realize, like uh, <laughs> Hashem Ku We say that every day, you know. <laughs> so that, that's already Shira Lai Shira Shira Lai Shira 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 that's I think so. Oh, yeah, that is a, that's a part of Shachar, it's part of Tikkun Kali. Right. So, so, so someone who's who's pressing on chicks is literally like he's freshen, freshen freshen, he's he's uh you know He's he's a firm guy. I told you these stories of Wallerstein. He had these stories. He, he people he were trying to help would be these kind of guys. They look like they're Hasidic mentioned. They got the whole yeah. lavush, the wife with the with the shaitel and the and the Yiddish shtib and the Shabbos kodesh and the yeah. shulin and the kigil and and they speak alles all in the Yiddish sprach and they go to the Rebbe shlita and they zitz and they learn a bissel Hasidic yedivoch. But then after the Vama Mikva, uh, the, the night before, they were busy with the Shiksa, yeah? Yeah. They, and then they'll go again on another night as well. And they start to like the Shiksa, you know? Like, yeah. Meaning they, they're busy with Beerus Asuris. And this kind of stuff can really pull a person down. Um, because once there's a Bagama Bris, it sort of puzzles your Amuna. Yeah. It, it's Matamtem, the Lave. It's, it's a really big, big problem. And then, and then you see, like, and also the damage it does, because eventually the wife finds out. And if she's able to forgive you, she never deep down ever does. You know? Right. And therefore your whole trust, your whole intimacy, everything's a bit messed up. And then your kids, the effect it has on them, and the, they see a Shagat's father, they don't, you know, instead of him being a role model and teaching them Derek Torah, right. they see through it all. It becomes a Klippus Kevin. Yeah. I don't know if he becomes that. This is always tuba, but with Nishma Sisrael. Right. And we have Nisyonis, we have to like fight. We, we can't give in. We have to show us to help protect us that we should fresh never... food and fresh and fresh and Yeah, we should no, but the food one, it's it's the damage is there and there is some sort of Rashima and you have to get it clean. Well here's talking about but this like, is uh, mamish heavy of various. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is, is like eating like real tray pork fresh, yeah, like seafood, pork, all the stuff you joked around pork before. Tray. Yeah, chatshon that you ate it. When I ever used to eat it before I became firm, I used yeah. to get violently ill. The yeah. was cleansing my body. I ate pork, okay. violently ill. I ate seafood, violently ill. Like ill, couldn't move. So I just like, I can't eat this stuff anymore. Can't wow. eat prawns, can't eat any of it. Wow. I used to get sick, sick, sick. Pork chops? Um, even, yeah, if I pork ate, chops. even if I ate slices of ham, I'd get ill, ill, ill. Pork chops. The was just cleansing me. I, I, wow. Thank God. Um, Cholof Stam? Mm, no, I don't think so. Masha'en Kei, Machalas Asuras, Bias Asuras. Yeah, so these heavy areas, that brings you into the Shorosh Klippas of Tomeus, the Gamre. Wow. So then you're like, you know, hanging out with Kevin Klipper and yeah, Karen Kevin Klipper. Klipper and those, those guys, or Christina, like, you know, Christina Klipper. 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 They're tied and bound by the extraneous forces, the Klippas forever. So it seems like once you're down there, like you're sort of stuck kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and we see Kai soul, like, you know, they're souls who've got lost. Yeah. Intermarry and bye-bye, you know. Yeah, my, my brother-in-law's, it's a random story, his brother-in-law's very close friend. This was a few years ago. Yeah. Regular nice from guy, black hat, you know. I don't know, wife and kids and Flatbush did, did very well financially. One day just told his wife, I'm out of here. And he ran away with a shiksa gamura. Yeah. 
Yeah. He left his kids. Everything. It was like just what? He ran away with a shiksa. Like yeah. a real shiksa. Like a yeah. like a shiksa shiksa or something. You know why it's called a sh- sh- shiksa? Because yeah. the Gemara says shock it. There's like, there's those like prawns and all that stuff are in a tummy. That's, that's what it's brought down. So the, in the Gemara, shekets. the shekets, the treif, all those treif kind of foods are inside. Right. So when you're connecting with this woman, you're connecting to something that's filled with that kind of right. food, that kind of air. It was just, shekets is like a woman was shekets. built with that kind of connection to the Gimel Kibbutz to mess. Right. That's the problem. And you don't yeah. want to be connecting to that. You're a yid. Just, you have to has to you have to realize what a blessing is when you have a holy wife. Yeah, she's this pure vessel for you to connect right. with. I mean, she's obviously more than that. She's got her own life, her own personality, and everything else. But just on a for right. a, on a spiritual level, she's this pure vessel. You're right. connecting into this person, who your seed it goes in the right place. Right. She feeds you kosher food. She's she's your shemaim. Like right. it's such a gift. Right. There's not there's not many women, righteous women in the world. She's like, really not. You know, sorry to mostly, say out there. Mostly Karen Kleepers. Yeah. Like AOC is not much of a righteous lady, you know? She's she's the uh, opposite. AOC Machshama. Yeah, Machshama, exactly. She's she's a freaking idiot. So <laughs> so the point is that you don't want that kind of girl. So you see, like, it, it, it's, but you have to, but spiritually, what's happening, you're being pulled down to this place where you could be stuck forever. This is it's not, it's not like a, oh, let me just have fun one night. That's like the Yates Horror story. Fun, this word fun doesn't even exist in the Yiddish guy, in, in the true sense, because there's no such thing as fun. There's Simcha, there's, there's right. a word of Sashem, there's, there's, there's a Schok, the Kedusha, there's, there's, there is, but fun, fun where, there's no word fun. It's apparently fun. it's an Arabic word in, in the, the one they use in Israel. It's not, it's not, it doesn't come from Lush and Kodesh. Yeah. Kef. Yeah, Kif Kef. It doesn't even come, it doesn't come from Lush and Kodesh. It's right. nonsense. I only recently found that it was an Arab word. It's also similar to Kefira. It's kind of my kids, like, not to say it. Yeah. Uh, it's not, I don't know if it's a bad word. Kefira. Yeah. Right, there's a place in Tveria called uh, Aqua Kef. Yeah, there you we go. You it? Yeah. So it's, you did? Yeah. It's a real Kef. The problem is this stuff, you can't elevate it until when? Till the day comes, when evil will be towed us from the world. But the good news is we're quite close to Mashiach, so there is hope for all these guys. Yeah, all those out there. So once Mashiach comes, then all this, this, this being bound up with death will be removed. It's a famous pasuk. In Zechariah, that there will become a day when Hashem will remove the Ruach Tuma from the land. Oh, amen. Good days. And so Hamas. then all these things will get elevated. Not and I, I do feel like, say someone in Machshima, like Hitler, that yeah. kind of person, the way he gets removed is being killed or disappears. It's so evil that evil consumes itself. Yeah. Because the spark of godliness has been removed, so therefore yeah. there's nothing there anymore. I. Until the sinner repents in the manner presents, as we said before, which case the sparks holiness need not remain in the clutch of the kibbutz until the end of days, then we'll be freed. Why? By doing tshuva. He does such a stark tshuva that his sins become into mitzvahs. His averias become into to mitzvahs. There's, there's the Lashon here. is Adonis nasa lo zechazach yes, mamish. There goes mamish. And it's based Here on he Gemara. separates and then it goes mamish. But it has to be a really Very intense profound. tshuva. She tshuva yeah. mahava amuka deliba. It has to be from the depths of the heart. Mahava chashek and nefesh okay ke davach dav ke No, it doesn't. It doesn't say that. that uh, I don't mean to be rude. It does not say about fasting and prayers. It says it's panemius. From the love of Hashem. Yeah, a tremendous deep love for Hashem, fervor, soul, like about tshuva. I, I would say I did that kind of tshuva. Right, I okay. literally was on fire for sure. I was, I was cocking. Do you know what that word in wow. English? Like cocking. I was like, to get up every morning, I'd be like... My, my, fire, my, brain. Yeah, my wife would be like, oh my God, you need to chill out. Like, I'd be chill like, my birch of Torah was like, aish. Wow. And like run off to daven like for hours. and you learn. an extremist? And I was crazy, man. I was davening. And people had to... Call, like a big robotic had to come and tell me, like, calm down a little bit. Like, you're like burning... Like my Birkas Karnim was like, you know, like burning holes through people's souls. You know, so it was just like it was the whole good rap line. the whole place was just shaking. So go tell them this in black. I was screaming Birkas Karnim. Yeah? Burning holes through people's souls. Yeah. No, we don't want to burn holes. You want to elevate souls. 
But the idea that you got rap like that. Yeah, oh, well, if you're working for the wrong team. No, text but the idea, because Kainem was, was, was fire. Wow, was I fire. would have loved to have been there. Yeah, people remember it. You can, I can, one day I'll introduce you to someone who, from those days, like I got a call the other day from one of these people, from Shmuel Zambel Deutsch. So he remembers me in those days. And uh, it, was, it was an avoda, like for the Olam there, not to like cry from how intense my books kind of was. I'm joking somewhat, but it, it was intense. And I was on fire. I was literally, the only way I could get from eating trafe and dark nightclubs and all that stuff was to go yeah. the complete opposite. And be totally on fire for Vodas Hashem. That's what I'm saying. So I had a time period where it was Amuka Deliba, Bahava, Vachasheka, Nefesh, Chakeka, Ledafka by Yisparach. It's like a very deep love and desire. And your Nefesh. So then you start to feel like everything else has a volume other than Vodas Hashem. And that now you're putting all that energy that was consumed in Klippers is now all going towards Kedusha. Because you're with Siddiquim, I see my Zuba bird, and you're cocking like. The davening, the hours of Avodah Hashem and the learning, yeah? wow. and the Tanug, you're starting to get the true pleasure of taste what it's like to get up early Shabbos morning and learn Torah, or the, 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 the simcha of, of, of sugya and shas, or understanding chassidus like we're doing now. Yeah. You start to get a tremendous ava and a shaker. This is the halal, the halal by Rav we're going to say halal today. The halal by Rav it's a, like songs and dance around it. It, 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 was, it was intense. Every single shtickle. Sounds was, intense. It was Aish. It was fire. It was Yerushalayim. It was Aish. You can go to Yerushalayim and you can join this hello. It, it probably won't start till like late in the morning and it's going to be fire. It's a Friday. You think they're going to... Maybe they'll, he'll be a little bit earlier, you know. We mucked him a little bit to cover Shabbos. But like it's still going to be fire. Yeah. And the summer national Hashem Eretz Eifah V'siyah. I have to say though for here... For this world, it's amazing what they're doing here. The yeah. halal here is amazing. The singing, the, the slavas, the energy. Mm-hmm. Some his soul was first in for Hashem, Ke'eretz Eifer Vitzir, and his parched and barren soul first dust me for water. You know, some guy phoned me this week, he's like said he's been sleeping for like 15 years or something in another place in Israel. And he, since he's come to Shirat David, he's, he's suddenly woken up spiritually. And he wants to come here and, and to move his whole family. After living 15 years in another place, wow. he wants to move here. And he knows it's expensive and knows it's so easy. To, uh, you know, we were having a whole chat about it because he's, he's so inspired by the Ruchnius that's here. Wow. Yeah, one of the guys actually messaged me about what time is, and I didn't respond because I was talking to you. And we're learning, but he wanted to know about um, the davening. Oh, today? Yeah. I'll send him what it says and show David knows, uh, news. No, I didn't say it here. But it, it, uh, it's in the other message of Shlomo put it there. I'll send it after the year. Yeah, so the idea that such Eifer, Vesia, you're like thirsting and the carrots Eifer, the desperately for the water, the, this barren land. You, you see, when you go to New York, you come back, you just want to get back to Eretz Yisrael. Not, you don't know why. You think it's, oh, my wife's there, my kids are there. But deep down, it's because you want to connect into the Ruchnius that's here as well. That's the deep reason. That's the real reason. Interesting, yes. Because your neshama knows it's going to get a different level of avodas Hashem here. Yeah. The spirituality, the energy, the serious nefesh, dealing with the car guys. Yeah, you're not going to get the that in America. The car guys. <laughs> or the car guys. You're going to be like, I want that in the kapara. I can only get that there to serve. Yeah, kapara. Yeah. But some nashah Hashem carries eye for b'sia. For in so much as now his repentant soul has been in a barren wilderness. Yeah, he was in Manhattan in the shadow of death. Yeah. He is <laughs> Towers. Yeah, which is <laughs> the Sitcha has been far removed from the light of the divine countenance in the greatest possible measure. The Zosama Nafsha Bayetza Oz with Samoy Nafshos Sid Sid and he repents out of love, his soul first for Hashem, even more intense than the, the souls of the righteous who have never sinned. So th- this is the idea. You're, you're like, kochim for Hashem. Right. You're on fire for Hashem. You, you right. want, you're thirsting for Hashem. Right. You're connecting to the, to the souls of the Siddiquim who never sinned, who never, never had any mikshore. That's mm-hmm. the kind of connection. You, this is who, you, who you, your chever is. Right. And here we go, we get some chizik. When a Baal Tshuva stands, not even the perfect Rosh can stand. We just had a shear in Hilkas Avelis. And there's a place in the, in the graveyard where there's more known Siddiquim are buried. 
Apparently, Balit Shiva have the same schus, so they can also be buried there. Phew. Real Balit Shiva, people who be emes, you know, do tshuva b'shlemus, the people who really yearn for Hashem. Because the only way you're going to get out of the fire of that world is the fire for Avodah Hashem. It has to be the fire of Kedusha to take out the fire of Tumah. It has to be this, the same intensity that you had that desire. You have to put, in, if not a little bit more, hopefully, to put to counteract what you, the damage you did. Yeah, the tumor that was brought. You have to to purify it. Has to be a, the same kind of fire, just like with kashrus and things like that. If you want to kasher something that became treif, you have to use the right. same kind of heat, the same fire that made it treif, or even more. You have to add a little bit more of fire, and, and to burn out the the tumor, or to elevate the tumor, uh, not the tumor, the kedusha that's within the tumor. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the nitzos was in that bustle that got trapped. Yeah. You release it by that intense avodas Hashem. Associates, or the sparks of the of your holy seed, you release it. That's the avoda. He's saying when is sparks. I mean, to tell him it was also breakfast today as well. His prayers upstairs. Uh, no, it's here, isn't it? It's here. I think so. Yeah. And there's going to be some food he's going to get ready. But let's quickly finish off until this shtickle here. This is concept of this abundant love. We're going to get into this concept. Was Avarabba, this overwhelming love. We say it every day, Avarabba, in the Shachris. Yeah, we should try to say it with a bit more like energy that we're turning the Averis into, into mitzvahs, mm-hmm. our sins into virtues. And this is by what? Through this tremendous love, this abundant love. Uh, so this is Havao. So a guy does tshuva, but he does it in a more like cold way. He just like, you know, sticks on the black cat, chuckles a little bit. Yeah, like learns a little bit of sugya here and there, talks to the shprach. He doesn't really like, he's not like burning for Hashem. He's just not doing averas anymore. So yeah, good. Kalakavod, you get forgiven, but you didn't turn your past into into you didn't elevate those sparks, which is about in olem klipa legamre ad eight eight case, and you're not going to elevate the the klipa legamre from from the klipa the spark that was trapped there until what shibole hamavis lenetzach until Moshe comes wow. and death will be swallowed for up forever. So mm. so it's haval. Let's do tshuva ba'av rabba with tremendous love, mm. hashaker, simcha. Let's do a, 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 a Gavaldic um, tshuva, and then that will bring Mashiach, Be'ez Hashem. Amen. So we should all be blessed to, to do that. We should be blessed with a thousand blessings. Yeah, but Aleph Slichot, one, one builder once said to me, that guy, the Kapara he gave me, just having him work for my house was a Kapara. Nah. I, I, I used to say to my wife, I think this guy's giving me free Gan Eden tickets. The way he's doing stuff. Wow. It's such a kapara, the way he does things. Well, this and guy does it. Yeah, but the best part is. Maybe he's more like kapara, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin kapara. <laughs> Kevin kapara. <laughs> if different ones, oh, this guy, he's a Kevin kapara. Yeah. Don't, don't bring your car right, to his daughter's house. The invite will be the Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh uh, Adder and this whole Adder. Can you feel a bit more right. simcha? A bit more Adder to Hashem? Your business decision, like. Be like a new advertisement. Yeah. Come to me, get clean. In all ways, clean spiritually, physically. You fresh on meatballs. <laughs> you don't have to. You know what my Rebbe always used to say, Maya back in the day, used to say, said you don't need to figure out how to make Nishonas for people. That you, you, we're good at it without having to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it comes natural. Right, right. <laughs> so it's time for us. Have a good Shabbos. And a good Khalidish. <laughs>